as we start out our users group today, just a couple of housekeeping things. If everybody wants to chime in and just in the chat, write whatever state you're from so we can get a sense of where everybody's from, because I know we have people from all over the country, so thrilled to have that. And we're gonna start off by launching a poll so we can also learn a little bit more about who all is with us. So if you can answer the poll question that just came up, that will be great. And we look forward to seeing who's in the room and um, see a lot of people answering, great. What type of organization are you representing? Are you educators? Are you in workforce or business? Are you a state level or a government entity? Really great to see. And of course, you know, today is definitely a little bit about our users and definitely want to be able to share some of the experiences that people are having. So we're excited to see a majority of you are our existing Learning Blade users. And some of you are new as well. So you'll get to hear a little bit about some of the best practices in, um, in that. All right, well, we, here we go. We have these results and we're gonna go forward. Um, so as I mentioned, you know, this is really about our users and having the opportunity to share from them. So we have this great group of leaders and speakers that we're going to have today. If you do have any questions, please go ahead and feel free to put them in the chat room. If you'll keep yourselves on mute, um, that will be appreciated unless you are obviously talking and presenting. We want, we want to hear you as well. So let's start off by my, it's my great pleasure and honor to get to introduce to you today, our host for today and um, our board chair, former US Congressman Zach Womp. Many of you may know that a few years ago, there was an America Competes Act that was in Congress. And it was needed really to have someone close the debate on the floor that could be compelling in the reasons that we need STEM and STEM education for our country. And so all eyes landed on former US Congressman Zach Womp, who happens to be from our state, from the proud state of Tennessee, he was able to do that. But Zach is not only just the person that closed the debate on the floor or a former US Congressman, he is someone that truly believes in pouring into youth and students and helping to improve our country and the future of our country. Of course, with his cute three, soon to be four grandchildren, which he pours into every day, but really to help students. And so we have been so blessed and fortunate to have Congressman Womp as our board chair. And it's my pleasure to turn the mic over to, to Zach. Well, good afternoon to everyone. I know for some of you, you're not on Eastern time. So all across the country in the different time zones, we wanna welcome you and thank you very much for your time. Uh, while two hours is a long time, I can tell you it goes by fast, especially if you're part of this program, it will go by fast. You know, February the 4th is an important day in my life because it was my dad's birthday and he actually left us uh, 10 years ago in a freak accident. He would have been 89 today. But he was an architect and designed buildings uh, all across the Southeast uh, in a 52 year career. But he grew up on a farm in Alabama and his parents neither had more than an eighth grade education, but they actually exposed him through the construction trades to what it would be like to be an architect. And he went on to Auburn University uh, don't tell the gov. Well, yeah, tell the governor of Alabama, Governor Ivy, that he went to Auburn because that's that's her school, uh, Nick. But um, it, that was just an example of what uh, exposure to the potential of a STEM education would do to a family. Because this very day, it impacts everyone in my family and my grandchildren, even because he was exposed. And so. It's been a real privilege. I've had the privilege serving 16 years in the United States Congress and being in different businesses throughout my life uh, to be exposed to some really cool things. But one of the greatest privileges I've ever had is to be asked to be the chairman of the board of Learning Blade because you've heard the success formula where preparation meets opportunity or find a need and fill it. All of those adages apply to Learning Blade. Um, founded by Dane and Sheila Boynton, Dr. Dane Boynton, both 
engineers by trade. They were in the education space for uh, about 25 years. And uh, after they were very successful and frankly, no longer needed to work, they got to do what they always wanted to do, which was to go into a STEM field to try to turn the next generation on to engineering, science, mathematics, technologies, because we all know that the number one reason students don't go into the STEM fields is a lack of awareness of what they are. I was on a call earlier today because I do a lot of energy consulting with a guy named Johnny Howells. He's an African-American vice president of supply chain at Southern Company. Been there 30 years. Talked to us about growing up in Birmingham, Alabama. Most of his friends end up going to local plants and working straight out of high school, but he was exposed to engineering and ended up going to the University of Alabama, becoming an engineer, working his way through the plants in Southern Company and Alabama Power around the Southeast. Now he's the vice president of supply chain all about exposing him to what the potential was for his life. Extraordinary what we're able to do. So now Sheila and Dane have built this amazing tool, Learning Blade. In the middle of our seven year experience of establishing the platform and putting it in the marketplace and, and, and sharing it with states and leaders around the country as to how you could capture these minds in the middle school area and expose them to these STEM fields through a platform, through technology, get them excited about it. Cause they do, they get real excited about it. Amazing things have been done and we've seen the benefits. I've literally wept over a computer when I listened to a young student talk about how they now know what they're gonna do with their life and how they can have the most impact and the most benefits. So it's extraordinary to be involved in something like this with just really good, smart people, entrepreneurs, innovators, the private sector, if we unleash it into the public sector and the public sector leadership gets it, you can build these partnerships, whether it's Boeing helping us give rise to STEM education in the state of Alabama and other states or other private sector or government in entities. And along the road, computer science has become such an important thing to all of our students uh, at that secondary level. So I'm grateful is uh, really the bottom line here to be involved. And I get to, you, you never, if you're with Sheila, you don't ever get to host anything because she's always in charge. But I get to be her representative here just for a minute and introduce what, what we call uh, mini keynoters. There's not time here for everybody to give a long speech, but we've got five presenters at a couple of minutes each. They're going to go in order. They're right there on your screen. But I want to introduce them all briefly, and then they can just go in order a couple minutes each. Uh, Nick Moore, uh, he is the best dressed person on this uh, Zoom call because he's always wearing a tie. That's why Sheila says he's going to be governor of Alabama one day, but he is a trusted advisor. He's really Governor Kay Ivey's top education policy advisor, and he actually runs the Office of Education and Workforce Transformation for the state of Alabama. And then Angel Malone is going to speak. She's the CTE head for the state of South Carolina. She's the Perkins Five lady for South Carolina. They're really innovators now in South Carolina for the governor. And then Dr. Kathleen Schofield, who's the executive director down in Florida, of what's called STEM2 Hub. She's going to talk about the regional effects of what happens when you really uh, see the STEM field. And then fourth will be Dr. Alan Pratt. He's the executive director of the National Rural Education Association. They're our partner because we all know that with uh, some degradation in the internet service across the country, the rural students are the ones that really benefit the most uh, and, and inner city, but the rural students are really important. So we have this great partnership with them. He's going to speak. And then Anthony Owens is going to wrap it up. Anthony is the computer science lead for Governor Asa Hutchinson, state of Arkansas. State of Arkansas may be the most innovative state on computer science in America. Governor Hutchinson's really been a leader here. And we're there uh, as, as a partner and our tools very effective in the state of Arkansas. So if you could each bring a little perspective from your, from your place uh, in this, uh, Nick Moore, you start us off, please. Thank you, Congressman. And thank you, Mr. and Mrs. Boyington. And uh, thanks to all the other presenters on here. What I really appreciate the most is to hear from folks that are using Learning Blade, that are thinking about experiential learning, project-based learning and, and STEM learning uh, that, are, that are doing that work in the classroom. And so I want to thank all of our educators and teachers and uh, anybody who, is, who has been with us uh, and really doing the lion's share of the work. Y'all have been doing the Lord's work 
throughout this past year. And certainly for everybody here from Alabama on behalf of Governor Ivey, want to thank you and let you know that we're going to continue to be there uh, throughout this recovery to make sure that we get the right funding, the right resources in the classroom. I think it's a great time to have a conversation about Learning Blade and to have a conversation about what we can do as part of the recovery from COVID-19 pandemic to put us on a glide path to competency-based education and using technology and expanding access to new modalities of learning uh, to truly meet the needs of diverse learners. And so for so long, we have used time and credit hours and other substitutes for the true mastery of competencies and the skills that students need to understand. At the same time, because of rurality, because of poverty, and if you think about a state like Alabama to where we've got uh, the, the same state that was the birthplace of the, the Confederacy and also of the Civil Rights Movement. And so we have a special position in this country and like many states in the South to demonstrate how we can truly become the, the better angels of our nature and to perfect our democracy, to expand um, access to economic equality and participation in a democracy for all of our citizens. And Governor Ivey believes that in this current space that we're in, one of the most important things that we can do to offer uh, every citizen the right to reach the, the full measure of their potential, uh, which is their right in this state and throughout the country, is to expand access to a 21st century education. And that begins with robust career exploration and discovery. Now, I don't know if y'all have been uh, in a similar situation to where you get set down and you get 10 or 12 questions and says, well, you ought to be an architect or a firefighter. And that may be true, but I think we can do a better job for our students in providing a way to, to, to make up for the experiential deficit that we have in so many areas. For example, the students that I taught in Lowndes County, Alabama, one of the poorest counties in the country, but some of the smartest kids, uh, they were in an area to where sometimes they'd never been to Birmingham. And you know, that's a two hour drive away. And then often they're passing by a factory on their way to, to Montgomery or part of our biotech corridor that's burgeoning in the state and they don't understand what's going on in that building. So it's hard for kids to understand what they wanna be if they haven't seen what there is to be. And we also know that if we're trying to meet the learning styles of diverse learners, that we can connect these two things together. So exploring all of our 16 career clusters and we're doing more as a state to put industry front and center, working hand in hand with our educators to take the recipe for our in-demand jobs and then to provide a creative way for our education and training providers to help our students master and, and quite frankly, the 940,000 Alabamians who have been unemployed or laid off or underemployed uh, since March 21st of last year. So we see this as part of a two generation approach of meeting the needs of our K-12 students and also adult learners who uh, in many ways, sometimes working through the, the prism of their child is the best way to actually rectify some of their adult literacy and then also uh, career exploration deficit. So Learning Blade has been a, also a tremendous example of uh, corporate citizenship and, and public private partnerships. And so I want to thank Ms. Tina Watts who is on the line today from the Boeing Corporation, who was very generous in providing uh, a, a, a substantial amount of, of resources for this partnership. And then also I wanna thank Dr. Eric Mackey, our state superintendent, and Ms. Dawn Morrison, who is also on the line, who has done an extraordinary job getting our computer science efforts uh, launched in the state. So uh, we, we expect uh, a lot more to, to come and over this next year, uh, we've, we've been doing a lot of planning and, and doing a lot of organizing and uh, trying to put, for example, in our Perkins 5 and WIOA plan, a new foundation for measuring and using data uh, from a P20W spectrum from preschool all the way through the workforce to so we can understand, you know, the right hand knows what the left hand's doing kind of thing, but also to return data and experiences back to the families and students of Alabama. So I want to thank uh, Congressman Womp, you and, and Mrs., Mr. and Mrs. Boyington for 
the opportunity to join you today, and I look forward to what this partnership will yield this year and, and the years to come. Outstanding. Angel? Well, good afternoon, everyone, and glad to be with you. And Congressman Wampas, I'm looking at your back screen. I see <laughs> Abby Phillips and Jake Tapper on there. So um, I was thinking about the, what the pandemic has taught us and the challenges that we've seen and some that we see on the news every day. Um, and, and then also thinking about the opportunities that have come along with that. And I think more so than the challenges, we've been able to see those opportunities. And in the area of career and technical education, what we've realized is that CTE is the road to economic recovery and prosperity for kids and for adults alike. It levels the playing field and gives them an opportunity to do great things and really have self-actualization and being their best selves. I'll tell you in South Carolina that we've had 98% of our CTE completers, those that completed a program, to graduate on time from high school. And 76% of those students graduated with an industry credential and 74% graduated with dual credit attainment. So when they leave out of school, they leave out with a greater competitive advantage for the workforce. In this day and in this time, it is no longer a time for the generalist, but it is a time for skilled experts in areas to help in the workforce. And CTE gives that opportunity for students to develop their skill sets in the workforce so that they can leave out and be able to be viable contributors to our business and industry partners. Just today, our governor, Governor McMaster, announced a new cybersecurity partnership with USC. And of course, we're right on it to be a part of that to expose our students, because we understand that it's not just enough to have access, but you must also have engagement. So I'm very thankful to Dan and Sheila, who have become family and great friends to me, for introducing us to Learning Blade uh, by visiting Arkansas with Anthony um, at that time and just meeting her in the midst of meeting Bill Clinton as well. I was a fan that day. Um, but during that time, we were able to engage with them, find out more about Learning Blade, and actually implement that for our middle school students here. Some of our, and we targeted our rural areas because we want to increase the access, awareness, and engagement for those students specifically, uh, as well as in other areas, because sometimes they have no knowledge of it. So Congressman Wap, I go back to that video uh, that you have behind you of Abby Phillips on the screen. And sometimes students don't know that especially students of color or students or underrepresented genders do not know what they can be if they never see it. So I'm excited about having the opportunity to extend what we do in CTE in the high school or the secondary level and post-secondary level into our middle schools and especially in the area of STEM. Because with this cell phone that I'm holding up, you might be able to see it or not, this iPhone 12 Pro Max, if I hold it up to my face, the AI that's in there allows the security to allow me to get in. And I don't want students to just be the users of this, but also the creators of this. And it's through exposure earlier on that they'll want to build their appetite and actually walk into these fields, and it will make us more competitive globally. So thank you. I just wanted to share that with you. And thank you, Sheila and Dane for the work that you do in, in providing access at a very affordable cost for us so that teachers like Tracy and Lori can use it every day. Angel, you are awesome. How about you, Dr. Schofield? Thank you so much. It's such an honor to be here to get to speak with all of you today. And um, I wanted to just really speak to what Angel said about diversity and about every child being able to see themselves in the STEM careers. Um, a really quick story, but I bought a bicycle with the girl's style, not with the bar across the top. And I tried to find a carrier so I could bring that home on my car. Couldn't find one that would hold that style of bike. And that's because there weren't girls sitting at the table while we were building this world of what do bicycle racks look like. So when I think about diversity and inclusion, of course, we want to help maximize every child's potential, but it's so much more than that. 
It's to build a world that's really equitable for all of us. And when I think about how do we do that, again, to back up what Angel said, you can't be what you don't see. And we need to give these opportunities to children everywhere, whether it's our rural students or our students in the urban core. I work in um, Northeast Florida with one of the largest school districts in the country, Duval County, and right down to one of the smaller districts, one of the poorest districts in our state. And to be able to work across the STEM learning ecosystem, and that aligns with our national STEM plan, when I can look at that and have a piece of sharing best practices between our districts, and then expanding that to the whole northern part of our state, the reach is tremendous. And we've been working hard on computer science, building computer science courses, working closely with our districts. And the Learning Blade has been so incredible because we give opportunities to everyone to see. And yes, you can see, thank you, Sheila. You can see that map of Florida. Our region really for computer science extends all the way across the top of Florida. And we've got over a million kids there. And so when we look at some of the curriculum units that we're putting in and giving kids hands-on experience with coding, with robotics, with artificial intelligence, so they can start to understand what it is and system thinking, I really think the learning blade has been where it becomes personal for kids, because not only do they get to choose a path and explore the careers within that path, but they get to discover that the STEM fields are for girls and that the STEM fields, that there's all kinds of different professions and roles. And to see the success in Duval County schools where some of the largest numbers of lessons have been completed by students and then to see similar results where kids understand and they want to take more math classes because they understand that math is important to their future. Seeing all that come together and seeing that data flow through our reports we get from Learning Blade really tells me that when you put together the experiences, the belief in every child of what can be for them, and then have the right tools to help them find their own heart and their own place in STEM, I don't think there could be a better experience. And um, Sheila, just I also want to thank you for your generosity with the Learning Blade, the pilots you've let us run, the any just about anything we want to try, we've been able to do. So your support is just without um, question that you care about the kids getting access to these careers as much as everything else. So thank you all for having me. And I can't wait till the breakout sessions in a little bit to see um, what the experts are doing. Well done, Dr. Schofield. How about you, Dr. Pratt? Hey, first of all, thanks, uh, Congressman Womp, for uh, introducing me. And uh, we're probably sitting maybe four blocks from each other right now uh, in Chattanooga. So that's good to know. And Sheila, we're probably two blocks from each other. So it's uh, exciting. Sheila and the whole Learning Blade team, thank you for everything you've done for rural schools and rural uh, communities. It's been a great partnership. Uh, Sheila and I started a discussion on the partnership probably 2015, 2016, I believe. And it's been uh, really uh, a vital success for us, but also our rural schools and communities. Uh, many of um, many of you know, rural schools, for the most part, the, the schools are the kind of the hub of a lot of rural communities and also the largest uh, workforce provider in a lot of those communities. So as the other panelists have kind of spoken to, the engagement and the opportunity to learn, no matter the zip code, is important. And I think Learning Blade gives our students the opportunity to kind of dream big and find uh, careers that they can do from our rural remote communities, but also do um, in the regional base. And, and I'm just going to be honest with you, we're, we're at a time and a shift where rural schools and communities, we, we have to find ways to be sustainable. We have to find ways to make our students engaged and encouraged to be a part of what 
where they're growing up and then come back to us or work remotely in our area to help us out. And so we look at this as a, as a, as a major shift in a major way to, to educate children. And the one thing the pandemic has really taught us and kind of, we don't have to educate the same way we did prior to pandemic. We have a lot of different ways we can educate children and that's remotely a hybrid or, you know, a, a, a different, you know, AB revo kind of revolving schedule. So we're, we're really excited about the future with Learning Blade. We're excited about what's gonna come out of our rural schools and communities. So once again, thanks for having us and uh, let us know if we can help you in any way. Well said, thank you. And so Anthony Owen is our cleanup hitter from Arkansas. He was uh, he was for computer science before computer science was cool. Anthony? Well, thank you, Congressman, and uh, thank you, Sheila and Dane. Uh, you know, uh, I don't think anybody who has a relationship with Sheila and Dane can't come away from them feeling like they're part of family. And, um, you know, I'm glad to hear that I'm not the only one that feels like that because they, they just do a wonderful job doing that. Um, you know, one of the problems with going last is that you, you hear all these other great speakers who talk about all this, but one of the best things about it is that you get to build off of what they said. And I think what they said was absolutely best and, and, and very correct. We have to look at, as, at these initiatives, as, at the CS initiative, as the STEM initiative, as the CT initiative, as a whole piece. We look at it from a policy standpoint, an inclusion standpoint, a communication standpoint, and an industry standpoint. We have to pull all those pieces together to make sure that they work well for our students and our communities. Back in uh, 20, I guess it was 2016, whenever we first looked at this uh, agreement with uh, Learning Blade, it was brought to me and I said, well, they don't even have a CS initiative by the, our CS module. And they did create one in response to our agreement with them, the, the intro to the computer science module, which is absolutely phenomenal. And we were proud of, to use it here in the state. Um, but when I looked at it, I was like, okay, I, I kind of thought about it for a little bit. But as I looked at it and thought about the long-term ramifications of putting that in our middle schools, it fit right inside our plan within Arkansas to ensure that computer science and computing was being, um, you know, accessible to all and exciting to all. Um, you know, it's different. It gives a different approach to just the theoretical uh, teaching of a concept to a student really understanding what they can do with those that content once they get out, which is so important and sometimes is missed. So uh, we do appreciate that. Uh, I believe Arkansas was the first state to surpass 1 million lessons completed uh, on the Learning Blade platform. So we'll continue to uh, hang our hat on that and just so appreciative to it. But, uh, you know, I think our, our, the, as I said before, the predecessors to me said it best. It has to be a whole uh, piece effort looking at it and Learning Blade in Arkansas has been an instrumental part of that, that puzzle. All right, Sheila, a lot of content in those five short presentations. So I'm gonna pitch it back to you, but if you can make the rest of this program as good as that portion of it, we're gonna have a great afternoon. Sheila. Doing what everybody always, you're, you're on mute. I know that's, you gotta say that at least once in every Zoom, right? So anyway, uh, thank you ever so much for those amazing um, leaders who are sharing their story and what they have done, not only with learning, but, but with education in general. You know, our design was to be part of these successful efforts. And I think you can hear the passion and the caring from each and every one of those speakers. You know, that is really what true educators are. Um, I realized that we really didn't even tell you what we're going to do today. So, hey, there you go. You know, we've been talking about it for weeks in our office. We know exactly what we're doing, but we're like, we didn't tell you all. Well, as you know, you just had a few mini keynoters. Rather than having one long one for 15 minutes in our Zoom land, we thought it would be better and really more captivating because usually when a person speaking for 15 minutes, they probably have like about three minutes of real nuggets in there. So we said, you know what, let's get those nuggets from these great speakers and thank you ever so much for that. Um, the other thing, you know, now the rest of this is a little bit about you all and our users. And so what we designed were five um, breakout sessions that I'm gonna talk about in a minute that will cover different aspects of Learning Blade and the use of it in different classrooms and different settings. Um, but first off, I wanted to make sure that you guys understood uh, something about backpack. 
So, you know, when the pandemic started last year in March, um, you know, we quickly realized that in this country, I don't care how much stimulus money we throw at it, we are not going to have internet in every home just like that. You know, the rural schools, but really even in the urban areas, there, there is not internet in every home. You know, we're very fortunate in Chattanooga where we have a EPB, which is our power board that provides some internet to some of our low economic regions, but not everybody's blessed to have that. So we quickly sat down back in April and really said, what could we do that could be contributing to this? And that is where the Learning Blade Backpack idea came from. This is our newest app. So with a current Learning Blade license, if you have a Chromebook, Students are able to, while they're at school, download the lessons, the interactive lessons of Learning Blade, go home where they do not have internet access, and then come back when the next time they're either on internet, um, internet access through a hotspot at McDonald's, Starbucks, or back at school, it will automatically upload their results. You know, we felt this was a real game changer and a way that we as curriculum providers could be supporting what is going on in education, even in an additional way, because we knew you as educators, I tell everybody every day, you know, our, our healthcare workers are our heroes, but our educators are our heroes too. And so, you know, we just really wanted to be able to provide this resource. So you're gonna hear about that if you're able to join the, the rural one. So as we said, now we're ready for our educator-led breakout sessions. We're thrilled to get to do this. Um, first, we're going to have, um, and again, these are five breakouts. Over the next hour, you will be able to choose two of them. You're going to move in the first one for about 25 minutes, and then we'll pull you back. It's like going to be like Star Trek. You're going to get to move through time and back into the main session, and then you can pick your second one. So if you have a current version of Zoom, you're going to be able to do that. If you do not, we may be able to mo move you into one. So hopefully we'll get you going on that. You are really going to get to hear some great stories. So our CTE careers uh, session is going to be led by James Wilson in Arkansas and Misty Cudless in Alabama. And that is going to be moderated by Ray Henson who is the former CTE director for the state of Arkansas. But when we were starting Arkansas, he was retiring and we were able to snap him up and get him to help us implement Learning Blade in Arkansas. Our, our number two breakout session is focused on project-based learning. And we're thrilled to have Tracy Elmore, STEM teacher of the year for the state of Arkansas and Lori Langdon, one of our queens of the use of Learning Blade from Ohio are going to share their experiences and they'll be moderated by Damon Crumley, our curriculum director. Many of you don't get to see him. He's kind of behind the scenes, but we let him out of his cage today and he gets to come and uh, be part of this great users group. Our number three session uh, is with Brandy Krisovich and Linda Stone from Florida and Kentucky respectively. On the Intro to Computer Science, yours truly will be moderating that and look forward to a great discussion around the importance of computer science. And our number four uh, breakout session is our rural and diverse students. Again, just a critical topic to talk about. This is going to be led by Diedrich McGee um, from Tennessee, part the STEM director for the largest school district uh, at uh, Shelby County in Memphis, and Amy Polanowski. I call her our queen of backpack. She is using backpack with 140 students, guys. It's incredible. So, you know, that's going to be a great session. And that is being led by Dr. Jared Bigham, who is our partner with the Tennessee Chamber and also working with us on Learning Blade and our uh, career, another career awareness program that we're doing here in Tennessee. And our number five session, and again, these are not in order of how you should choose them. I want you to choose what's important to you, but the importance of data. You know, I think uh, Angel talked a little bit about others. You know, we need, data is what we use to inform our decisions. Everything we do in our life is based on data. And so this is going to be led by Dr. Lori Lambert of, our, of uh, South Carolina and Dr. Elaine Swafford and Phoebe Mount of Tennessee. Uh, Elaine and Phoebe are with the first school that ever had Learning Blade, the Chattanooga Girls Leadership Academy. And if you want to learn about data, 
Dr. Schwaffer, it's your woman. She has a war room that she always tracks every success of every one of her students. So another great opportunity for you. All right, welcome back, welcome back. We've got mostly everybody back. I hope you guys, I hope the breakouts have been phenomenal for you all. Again, thank you to all of our speakers that did that. Um, we're gonna just give you a one minute sort of synopsis on each of our breakouts and our moderators, our Learning Blade moderators will be sharing that with you. I'll, I'll start and we just had some phenomenal conversation from Brandy Kristovich from Florida and from Linda Stone in Kentucky and the amazing work that they're doing around computer science. There were a couple of really highlights for me that I think were empowering and powerful. And one of them was that computer science and learning about that is a great equalizer. Think about it. You know, today's economy requires that you have to have some kind of computer science at least knowledge, if not expertise. And so making that the great equalizer is really powerful, I think, for our educators. And so, you know, seeing that and hearing about that and definitely the work that goes on in Kentucky where they require every eighth grade student to do the intro to computer science modules in Learning Blade, you know, is a way that they're helping to build that. But both of them in Florida and in Kentucky, and I'm sure uh, for everyone, does a great equalizer. The other thing is also noting that, you know, while we're creating this in middle school and the demand around computer science, we've got to also at the same time, see what is the availability of teachers that can teach high school computer science courses. So that is also very important as we're creating this demand, we've got to be able to meet it in the high schools and it's vice versa. So, you know, I really uh, appreciate Brandy and, and Linda for your insights into that. And obviously, you know, we don't have all the answers here. This is about a conversation and we're gonna keep that going on. So I'm gonna turn it over to, let's see, who's going next? We'll have maybe Ray, Ray Henson and talking about CTE. You're on mute, Ray. You know, we get to say that once every... <laughs> And mute myself. There you okay, go. can you hear me now? Yeah. Uh, had some good discussions, and I think it's been very helpful for our middle school students in career development and the STEM or computer science classes to help all students, male and female, uh, to see their opportunities in STEM so they can better prepare themselves for the high school pathways of study and for the careers that are in the industries that are in their area where they're, uh, you know, graduating from. So I think it helps students to develop those foundational skills and the knowledge to better prepare to enter into that career pathway at the next level. Great, thank you. Okay, how about from Damon? All right, uh, well, uh, let's see. In our se breakout session, we had um, uh, Lori Langdon from Ohio. She showed us um, uh, how she uses Learning Blade as the primary focus for her STEM explorations class. Um, she uh, uh, talked through a lot of the ways that they uh, progress through the missions and work in teams. So she talked a little bit about the collaboration that her students can do. Uh, we also had uh, Tracy Elmore from South Carolina. And Tracy showed us a lot of creative ways that um, she is able to go into Learning Blade and sort of pick and choose and take the best parts that align uh, with the subject matter that she's teaching in her classes. And so she's able to mix and match and uh, do a much more targeted approach to uh, show, okay, this uh, project-based learning activity works really well with this topic that we're discussing. So both of them showed some very interesting approaches to using Learning Blade, very creative, and uh, it, ours was a, a very interesting and exciting uh, session. Great, thank you. All right, how about from Jared? Yeah, we had a, a great session uh, with Amy and Diedrich and De uh, Amy really giving examples on the ground of the backpack app and how um, it can be leveraged for students to work at home that don't have access to internet. And one of the things I hadn't thought about that uh, Amy brought up that 
uh, it with students that are able to use it, it eliminates the needs that the, the app brings that students might feel like they're different if they don't have uh, internet access. And so this app eliminates some of that awkwardness that students might feel to say, well, I just can't do this because I don't have internet access. So, uh, and the expense of internet in some of the homes is a is an issue for a lot of rural families. And I live in a very rural part of Southeast Tennessee. And I know just uh, all around me, there are dozens of families that don't have internet access. And so um, it's just a, it's a, a timely tool for the type of learning environments we're in right now. So we were excited to hear about that. And uh, and then Diedrich got more in the weeds about Learning Blade and, and how it's utilized in our largest district in the state and really engaging students. And one thing that we talked about that I have personal experience with with my five kids is how the missions have these stories that really hook students and you know, they get immersed in this mission while they're learning STEM skills that are embedded in there. And so um, I think that's what sets Learning Blade apart without sounding like a sales pitch that uh, it has that story that really makes it personal for the students versus just skill and drill that they might get in other resources. So great conversation around that and, and the fact that in Tennessee, our governor has valued it so much that has made it uh, uh, free for all Tennessee students to use at school and at home. So um, it was great conversation. Great, thank you. Last but not least, let's hear from Joshua and our data discussion. So thank you. Uh, we had an awesome conversation. We heard from uh, a school reformer uh, without, without really comparison, uh, Dr. Swafford, one of the oldest, one of the most veteran teachers in Learning Blade, Phoebe Mount. She was probably the first teacher ever to use Learning Blade and still is using it eight years later. And then a brand new teacher using Learning Blade and they were talking about data. And Dr. Swafford said something pretty amazing to me. You get your car checked at a car place and they have a 30 point check. Well, she uses a 15 point check and she tabulates data and, and really holds all of her staff to this 15 point check and they have a data war room. And then they talked about, you know, Phoebe, the, the classroom uh, practitioner and um, Dr. Lambert talked about how they use the data. So Phoebe said this, data helps teachers know their student better. And that Learning Blade gives that teacher insight on their student's performance and allows the students to also understand their data and it gives purpose to real data. So then it's a dual purpose, as Dr. Lambert talked about real authentic data collection activities in Learning Blade. So Phoebe's using Learning Blade's data to help students understand the purpose of data and the science behind it. And Dr. Lambert's using some of our resource lessons in the, on the resources tab to do authentic data collection with students. So just a really powerful conversation on the importance of data and on having students transparency into their own data and Learning Blade allows students to see how they're performing. And so, you know, from a school reformer down to the classroom practitioner that brings that all together, data is critical and Learning Blade's got a lot of data points that teachers can use and standards alignment. So a good conversation and uh, I learned some new things myself, which is great. Yep, I think we all did today. Again, thank you so much to all those breakout presenters. So, um, so as we wrap up, I'm gonna turn it back over to our board chair to wrap us up. But I wanna first take a moment to just thank everybody who was on today. This is gonna be a really fun thing because guess what? You're gonna get out of school early today. Get out like a few minutes early. Everybody loves when they get done early. They don't like it when they get done late. So we're gonna give you back a few minutes of your time. But before we do, um, just want to thank our entire team and everyone that worked to make this definitely possible. Um, we are ever so grateful. We're going to follow up with a uh, email and the recordings as best we can with all the slides and other things. So definitely stay tuned for that. But I'm going to turn it back over uh, to Congressman Womp to um, really wrap it up for us. Well, really, I've just been... Uh 
privilege to participate and to learn and to absorb what all we've uh, listened to. Um, I, I knew some people put in the chat a request, just like Dr. Swafford's checklist. We'll try to get everything that you request to everyone here so that we can all share. I'm interested in what those 15 things are that she's looking for because best practices, you know, are really good things for us to share with each other. Uh, we have partners all across the country now. They're on the screen in front of you here. Uh, some are private, most are public, some are local economic development, but frankly, workforce development is at the heart of what this is. And some of the thoughts, even before group one reported out, I was going to use this equalizer notion in my closing comments because I see Learning Blade as a tool and computer science as the thrust for the equalizer. I ran for governor 10 years ago in the state of Tennessee and I came in second. And that's why I'm here with you today. But um, when I'm I ran, glad you did. Well, when I ran for governor, I, I really focused on reading proficiency at the third grade level because the data showed and still shows that if a student is reading at third grade level in third grade, the rest of their education is much easier than if they're not, if you have to catch them up. But I would argue that based on where we are today, if we do nothing, education is changing dramatically right now. If we do nothing, education is changing. The traditional paradigm of a four-year degree or graduate degree for the workforce and the jobs of the economy in the 21st century, there is a disconnect. This is I mean, rarely in your life you get to be part of something that actually changes the trajectory of people's lives. And that's what this tool with computer science, coding, all of the components of this changes the trajectory of young people's lives who aren't sure because of their background what's out there. What are the possibilities? What are the opportunities? In a free society, we can't really guarantee equality or outcomes, we can guarantee or work to guarantee equality of opportunity. This gives opportunity to children that might not have it any other way. Nobody in their house or in these fields, so they don't know what they don't know. And this allows them this exposure. And so we're really engaged in something, y'all, that is timely. It is very impactful. It is moving the needle. And frankly, if everyone in middle school in this country had access to what we're offering, this combined um, continuum of, of, of benefits in one half a generation, in 10 years, we transfer, transform the workplace in the United States of America, make us all more competitive. We will compete with the Far East. We will compete with uh, other emerging economies that might may be doing a better job on technology development than we are but we're still really the, the think tank for new technology and breakthroughs, but the workforce has to follow where this creativity is. We are rapidly catching the workforce up with the opportunities by the deployment of learning blade, coding, computer science for all, the whole continuum. So thank you for being in it with us because we still got a lot of work to do, but a lot of progress. And so the innovations of the Boyntons, uh, light with backpack, you take a Chromebook, just a few basic tools, and people's lives are changed. So congratulations to you all. Thank you for joining us. Sheila, do you want to sign off or are we done? Can I interject? Well, since you brought up you brought up workforce. Um, it, 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 I can give a very quick example of how this can get um, students on a pathway into STEM fields. My son, who's 17 now, and he's about 13, was bound and determined he was going to be a principal like me <laughs> and at the time. And But I was, I was doing work in Chattanooga, and uh, I stopped by Thinking Media just to learn more about Learning Blade and what they were doing. He saw 3D printer there and, and items printed from that and got him very interested. So they gave us free access and a, an account. And he played around on Learning Blade and, and eventually uh, we got him a 3D printer. He ended up buying a couple more. He's got a 3D printing business now and wants to be, he's going to be an industrial engineer just because of that one encounter. 
Um, I really want him to go in education, and, and, uh, and but now the Boyntons have diverted him completely with learning blade. So that, that's You're not welcome. a made up story. That's <laughs> I sure it's not the only child we changed their path on. There's a few others and uh, very blessed. Again, thank you so much. We want to remind you, Learning Blade is fully funded in Arkansas, Alabama, Missouri, South Carolina, Tennessee. Any schools that are on there from here can certainly get a free account by just going to learningblade.com slash the abbreviation of your state. If you want some training or need any other information, you can email us at info at learningblade.com. And certainly, um, you know, want to remind you too, Many of you might know this, but we have a partnership with Flash Forge 3D Printing Company um, and schools that complete 3,000 lessons. This year, it's a little bit less because of the pandemic. So it's normally 5,000. But this year, for those that complete uh, 3,000, we will be sending them a free 3D printer based on our partnership with Flash Forge. So we really appreciate them as well as if you've already won a 3D printer, you can't win a second one, but you can get a green screen. Um, and maybe we'll have drones and we'll have other things coming down the pike. But again, thank you to everybody for participating today. Thank you to Congressman Womp for your generosity of your time and really to all of our speakers for your incredible work. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that education, educators are our superheroes. We appreciate you. Have a great evening, everyone, and, um, and take care and stay safe.